Hi friends, Nathan here, and today I'm showing you how to make your very first guitar arrangement. Now I know many of you have heard my arrangements and wanna be able to create your own, but you still haven't taken that first step and tackled that first arrangement. Uh, now ultimately, this whole channel and beyondtheguitar.com is all about equipping you with everything you need to make your own guitar arrangements, but I have this constant fear that I could teach you all the right things and yet some of you may never follow through on your desire to make your own arrangements. That's because there are three common barriers that people run into when learning something new or pursuing a new goal that completely halt their progress. So today we're gonna break down those barriers and I'm gonna give you four practical steps that you can follow to both start and finish your first arrangement. Now as we get started, I want you to scroll down real quick and let me know in a comment, what is it that's stopping you from starting or finishing your first arrangement? And we'll see as we go through this video if it relates to one of these barriers. And um, while you're down there, if you could just tap that like button for me too, that always helps a lot, so thank you. Now your first step is to pick a simple song or piece to arrange. In this case, I define simplicity by two factors, speed and instrumentation. Uh, so pick something that's not crazy fast, but has a nice manageable tempo. This means that one, it's gonna be easier to pick out the notes by ear, and two, it's likely gonna be easier to play. For instrumentation, simplicity means fewer instruments. Fewer instruments means fewer notes, which means it'll be easier to pick out the notes that you're hearing by ear, and it'll be easier to fit those notes on just one guitar. So I would avoid full orchestral pieces for your first arrangements. Uh, that leaves a ton of options to choose from. Uh, some examples I would go for would include piano, uh, piano and violin, a singer and guitar, uh, even a full band. But what you want is you wanna hear a clear melody and clearly defined chords or a bass line. This all ties into the first of those three barriers, assuming that arranging is too complicated for you. You hear a professional guitarist performing this really complex arrangement and you convince yourself you'll never be able to do that so you don't even try. But you've gotta remember, you're not seeing the full picture here. That guitarist didn't just wake up one day being able to make these crazy arrangements. They started small and they started simple and they probably felt just as overwhelmed or intimidated by the whole process as you do, but over time, they got better and better at it. You don't need a music degree to make your own guitar arrangements. You don't need to be some type of music theory whiz, but you do need to start and be okay with starting simple. On to step two, learn the melody by ear. So work through the piece in sections, identify and isolate the melody and find those notes on the guitar. Now there are tools that can help you through this part of the process that I talk about in my best software for making guitar arrangements video. Uh, but at the very least, you can slow down the audio wherever necessary with YouTube's built-in playback speed feature assuming that you're able to find a YouTube video of the song or piece that you're arranging. Slowing down the audio helps you hang on each note a little bit longer and gives you more time to isolate and identify it. Now, if you have a really hard time identifying notes by ear, be patient with yourself. It takes time and practice, but this is something that you can incorporate in your daily practice routine. Pick out melodies from different songs and challenge yourself to find them on the guitar by ear. Not only will this develop your musical ear, but also your fretboard knowledge in the sense that you'll start to make quicker connections between the notes that you're hearing and where they appear specifically on the fretboard. Little pro tip here, I often use my voice to help me identify notes by ear, especially when I'm trying to hear individual notes out of a chord. It really helps me to be able to match the pitch that I'm hearing with my voice. Uh, it just helps draw out that specific note from the mix, which I can then match with the guitar. Uh, so I don't have to just loop that section of the audio over and over and over while I'm looking for that note on the guitar. So if we take this musical example here. 
right? I'm listening to that top melody line. And like I was saying, I might use my voice to sing or hum along with some of those notes uh, as I'm getting a feel for the section and to give my ear some extra reference, right? So let's listen back. All right, one more time. All right, so I think I got it. So I can now use my voice as a guide as I'm finding the notes on the guitar, right? So that's a G, D, right? Let's double check there. Cool. So you, you don't need to be a singer or even have a nice voice to be able to do that. It's just about matching pitch, right? So we're, we're so used to casually humming, singing, or like whistling melodies uh, that matching pitches with our voice comes naturally to some uh, or with a little bit of practice for others. So now that we can play the melody on the guitar, step three is to identify our bass notes. Now, if the piece you're arranging has a really distinct bass line, this should be fairly simple, just like picking out the melody. Uh, but more often than not, our bass line is going to be defined by a chord progression, meaning we need to isolate the lowest notes that we hear in each chord to identify our bass notes. One thing I recommend here is using decent headphones or speakers if you have access to any, uh, as I'm using these crappy earbuds, uh, but almost anything is gonna be better than your phone speakers or your built-in computer speakers, right? You're gonna be able to hear everything more clearly with higher quality headphones or speakers and those low end frequencies especially are gonna be louder, helping you hear those bass notes more clearly. So if we listen to that same section, I'm listening for the lowest notes in each of those chords. So we have a chord right at the beginning and then right there. Okay, one more time. All right, um, so isolating specific notes out of a chord like this can be tricky for your ear at first, so don't be discouraged if it isn't obvious right away. Um, now often I'll still use my voice to help me here, but sometimes the really low bass notes will fall out of my vocal range um, so if I'm still going to use my voice, I'll match the pitch and octave above in those cases. So let's listen back here and try to find out what those bass notes are. So that first one, that's pretty clear to me, right? Do you hear that? Okay, so let's figure out what note that is. That's a C. So our first bass note is a C. Next bass note is definitely out of my range. That's it, boom. All right. All right, boom. If I did an octave above, boom, boom. So what note is that? That's an E, right? So this E specifically. So our two bass notes there are if you want more ear training practice, after you sign up for my free course, Fretboard Freedom, which I'll talk about at the end of this video, uh, over the next week, I'll send you three follow-up lessons, one of which covers ear training, where I share my favorite ear training apps that you can download for free to continue to develop your musical ear. Uh, so the link to sign up for Fretboard Freedom and those additional lessons is down below, or you can go to beyondtheguitar.com. So we've identified our melody, we know what bass notes accompany that melody, and now some of you might be wondering why I haven't mentioned anything about identifying the chords that you're hearing in the song that we're arranging. Now, I very deliberately chose not to address chords in this video because of this second barrier that keeps people from making their own guitar arrangements, and that's going too deep too soon. This starts the same way that first barrier did. You hear this professional guitarist playing this really amazing arrangement, except this time, congratulations, you decide to try it for yourself, but you get fixated on how intricate and complex this other guitarist arrangement was, and you hold yourself to that same standard, and you get frustrated, 
and eventually give up when you're not able to immediately replicate that same level of complexity in your own first arrangement. Like I said before, you have to give yourself a chance to start simple. So for our final step number four, we're gonna put it all together by combining our melody and bass notes on the guitar to form our arrangement. Now force yourself to keep it simple. You should literally just have one singular melody line on top of one single bass line, which means you should never have more than two notes playing together at the same time. This simplicity is gonna help you follow through and actually complete your first arrangement rather than constantly second guessing yourself or mulling over every creative choice or beating yourself up for it not being good enough. Remember, done is better than perfect because perfect is never done. Completing your first arrangement is a huge milestone and it's gonna give you a big confidence boost, making the process less intimidating going forward. Uh, and you've set the bar for yourself that you can improve on in future arrangements. Now the main challenge that you might run into when putting all these notes together on the guitar is that certain melody notes might be out of reach of certain bass notes based on where you initially found them on the fretboard. So with how the fretboard is laid out, you can find the same note in multiple locations across the fretboard. So you might just have to uh, explore the fretboard a little bit and experiment with playing those same notes in different places to find a position that works for both the melody and bass notes to be able to be played together. Let's look at that same section and piece together the melody and bass notes that we found before so you can see what that looks like. Right, so our melody again was G, F sharp, E, D, B, G, right? And our bass notes were C and then low E. Okay, so it's just a matter of figuring out how to play those two lines at the same time uh, and at the right times, okay? So I can grab this C and this G, just like this, right? I'm gonna sustain that C that whole time, but now it's time to switch to the low E and I can play the D here at the same time. Pretty straightforward, right? And that's nice, right? That's it. You're just gonna rinse and repeat that process for the rest of the song or piece that you're arranging. Before we wrap up here, the final barrier that you might be running into is information overload. It's really easy to fall into the temptation of wanting to learn everything you can about arranging and music theory and guitar technique before finally feeling ready to tackle your first arrangement. You'll watch this video and a few others on my channel. You'll take my free trainings on my website and then maybe, just maybe, you'll feel ready for your first arrangement, right? Because it just needs to be perfect. Don't get stuck here. I can give you tons of valuable information about arranging that will genuinely help you improve, but honestly, the best way to learn is by doing. So I don't want you to watch another video until you followed the steps in this video and started and completed your very first arrangement. And to make things even easier so you have no excuses, I'm gonna give you the full audio for that simple piano composition that you heard a small section of throughout this video. Uh, use that as source material for your first arrangement if you're having a hard time picking or committing to a specific song or piece to arrange for your first time. Uh, so the link for that is down below. Now, once you've completed your first arrangement, as I mentioned before, I have a gift for you that will help you take your arrangements to the next level. My free course, Fretboard Freedom, teaches you how to find and play chords anywhere on the fretboard, equipping you with everything you need to know to add chords to those melodies and bass lines, no matter where they take you across the fretboard. So this is a natural next step to add complexity and creativity to your arrangements. So go to beyondtheguitar.com or follow the link down below for free access to the course. Next week, we're gonna take your arrangements a step further and talk about how to harmonize your melodies. So make sure you tune back in then. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button to let me know and to help more people see it. Make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on so you never miss future videos. Uh, and as always, much love and I'll see you in the next one.